What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. Now one of the most common questions I get asked is, how can I use some sort of software to design my projects? Because wood is expensive and I don't wanna cut it up into a bunch of pieces without having my project kind of ironed out. Well, here's what I do. Let's jump into a program that I love to use, which is Fusion 360 by Autodesk. Now, first time out, I am not sponsored. This video is not sponsored by Autodesk. They don't know who I am. Uh, there's no affiliation whatsoever. I'm just gonna show you the software that I like to use. You can download a personal license or a business license for the software. Business license, you know, you're gonna pay for that and it's gonna come with a heck of a lot more features than the personal one, which makes sense. When we first get into Fusion, we see that we have a blank canvas. We also have this cube up at the top corner here. The cube shows you what angle you're looking at and you can click and drag it and you can move that cube around and it's gonna move your project around so you can see it at all different angles. Up at the top, these are all your tools that are gonna allow you to shape your project parts. And there's quite a bit here. Man, check all these out. You can even do the drop downs. You see there's even more options. And then all the words up here like surface, mesh, sheet metal, that brings up even more options. This can feel overwhelming, but don't worry about it. We're gonna go over to the solid section. This ribbon is where I spend 99% of the time whenever I'm making projects. All right, if we're gonna make a part or component, something that's part of our project, well, we have to make it two-dimensional, like drawing it on a piece of paper, before we can actually make it three-dimensional. So that's the difference between having a sketch and actually having the, the item itself. So we gotta do a sketch first. At the top, we see there's a button that says Create Sketch. So I'm gonna click on that. We get this, these are the three different planes that we can work with as far as how we wanna draw this item. And I click on the front one right here. I know it's the front because the cube up here says front. You'll also see that there's a pop-up and there's a couple settings here you can choose. I pretty much ignore almost all of this, so don't sweat this part. We're making a box, so I need to start by drawing the sides of the box. At the top, we have our drawing tools, lines and squares and circles and things. And under create, there's even more options for us. Let's keep it simple. I'm gonna hit rectangle. I'm gonna come up to this circle. I'm gonna click on it and I can just move my cursor around and uh, make this whatever size I want. Let's say the box side is gonna be two inches tall and four inches long. I can move this around. I can hold down my mouse wheel and just move it. I can drag it around this way. I can also zoom in and out with that same mouse wheel. If I hold down the shift key and then I also hold down the wheel on my mouse, I can spin my project at any angle I want. I love this. This is the part that makes Fusion so awesome. I can see my project from all different angles. As I'm doing that, I see that that cube is moving over on the top right. I can click on this cube and I can drag that around and it's gonna move my project at those different angles. Or I can simply click on something like front and it will move it automatically to the front. Cool, we have a rectangle, but we need a box side, which means we need to turn this into a 3D object. I'm gonna click on my rectangle. I'm gonna come up to the top. I'm gonna go over to solid, and I'm gonna go over to press pull. An arrow shows up on our item that we can drag and we can make this to whatever size we want. If this is gonna be a box side, let's make it 3 eighths of an inch thick. Okay, cool, we have a big, ugly gray cube. Well, that doesn't look like wood. How do we fix that? Let me show you. Well, over on the left-hand side, you can see we have our sketches that we can turn on and off. Any of those sketches we drew, I'm gonna close those. And then we have bodies. This is the important part. These are the things that we actually made. So in this case, I can double click on this and I can call this side. If I right click on that and I can come down to physical material, we get a pop-up. This is what our material is made out of. So we've got some different options, fabric or glass or metal or something like that. And there's actually one of them that's wood. So I can come down and there's a lot of different selections here. I didn't make these. These are our standard. And I could say, let's make this maple. If I click on it and just drag it over and drop it. Um, nothing actually happened, but it really did. So if you think about it, what is this whole thing made out of? Well, now it's made out of maple or wood. Kind of think of it like, an apple, where you have the inside of the apple and then you have the outside peel of the apple and then they, they don't look exactly the same, right? So we know that the inside is maple, it's wood. The outside though still looks like gray steel. We can change the outside appearance. So that's why we gotta go to the appearance section. I'm gonna go back up to my body. I'm gonna right click on it. I'm gonna go to appearance. We get another pop-up that changes the appearance. And you have really cool options in this thing and you can modify these as you want. You can make new ones too but I'm gonna go with a uh, maple, maple semi-gloss. I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna drag it over and drop it. Close this. 
Check it out. We actually now have a board and it looks like a board. That's pretty sweet. If I can't remember how long this is, I can always click on one of the edges and down at the bottom, it says four inches. So that's kind of your cheat code, right? We know that's four inches long, but let's say I change my mind. I don't want this to be four inches. I want it to be three inches. We can click on one of these. Like I'm gonna click on the end back up to the top, press pull. We got a pop-up window. First thing it says offset type. You can see there's modify, there's new offset, there's automatic. And I typically go with new offset. Some people like other options. You can kind of play with this to decide which one you want to go with. Then you have the distance. How much do we want to change this by? You can manually type it in, but I also like to use this arrow and I could just drag it. Let's make it negative one. So we're going to take one inch off of this, hit enter. Now, if I click on my line, I can go down to the bottom. I see it's really three inches now. I'll tell you this, I'm completely self-taught on the software. And there are people that like to spin circles around me on it. So, you know, there might be certain things that someone goes, yeah, but I mean, if you would have clicked this, this, and this, it would have did this other thing. Yeah, probably so. I'm just going to give you the bare bones, the stuff that's going to get you up and running with the software. So you don't have to worry about learning every little shortcut right now. You can always pick that stuff up later. But maybe I changed my mind. I'm going to click back up on this. I'm going to go to press pull and I'm going to drag this out. We're going to make this one inch and that brings us back to four inches long. I got one box side, so I need three more, but I also need joinery. For joinery, how about rabbit joints? I like rabbit joints, they're easy to make, pretty universal, so let's do those. I don't wanna go through all the same steps that I just did if I'm gonna make other boards. So what I actually am gonna do is I'm gonna select mine and I'm gonna copy and I'm gonna paste it and I'm gonna make a second one. Now I have two boards, check that out. Up here at the top, I can uh, hide that other board that we just made. We'll deal with them a little bit later on. Now, how are we going to put a rabbit joint in this? Well, I'm going to flip this over to the back side of it. I'm going to click on the back face because I want to draw a sketch on this back face. We come up to the top. You remember, we have our create sketch button. We can see that if we move our board around, all the other ones are the normal shade color. This one right here has this uh, this other color to it, like it's a little bit shaded in. We know that we're drawing on that side. A rabbit is essentially a rectangle, right? So let's go to the drawing tools. I'm going to click on the rectangle tool. My cursor will automatically snap to edges and corners. So I can put it on this corner, I can click on it, and now I can drag this to whatever size I want. So it snaps down at the bottom too. Well, I know that it's going to be automatically two inches tall. And as far as the width goes, well, our boards are three eighths of an inch wide. So let me put that in. Now when I hover my mouse over it, you see how it separates these two. And that's pretty cool because now I can actually adjust this one and make this a different thickness than this part over here. We have a rectangle on one side for the rabbit, but we need one on the other side too. And a lot of times I'll just repeat the same steps if it's really, really simple. But other times, you know, you draw something that's kind of complicated and you go, I don't want to redo all of that stuff, especially with, you know, angles and things. So that's why this function here is a godsend. We can go up to the top and click on the line tool. I can move this along the edge and it'll snap when it gets to the middle. See how it has a little triangle. I can click on that, drag it down to the bottom of my workpiece, and see it snaps again at the triangle. I click there. Now we have a line right in the middle of our board and we can use that as a guide to say, I want this thing that we just drew here to also appear on this side. That's called a mirror. What I can do is click on my lines and hold down the shift key so I can select more than one. At the top, you see there's this button right here. It says mirror. We get a pop-up window and that one says the objects or selected because we selected four lines. But what's our mirror line? You can click on the button, click on the line we just drew and then hit OK. Look at that. So now we know that this matches this. Not bad. So we can keep drawing on this if we want to, like draw out a channel for the box bottom to fit into, or we can do that later. So for now, let's stick with just working on the rabbits. For this rabbit, we have to decide how deep do we want the rabbit to be? Well, if our board's three eighths of an inch thick, then I don't know, let's do quarter inch. At the top, go to solid, go to press pull. I'm going to click on the rectangle and I'm going to click on the other rectangle. And you see our arrow pops up we can adjust this. And I'm going to say, I want this to be negative. And if I'm going negative, you notice whenever I'm moving this over, it turns red. So it shows that we're cutting into the workpiece. If we pull it the other way, it'll extend it. We want to go negative 0.25. Voila, we have rabbits. Now we got to make sure our board will fit into the rabbit. Now, how do we do that? 
that. Well, let's go back over here and let's turn it back on. I wanna be able to move my component around. So up, down, sideways, tilt it at an angle, rotate it, whatever. And that's why there's a button that takes care of that. We're gonna select our body and then we're gonna go up to the top and we're gonna click on this right here. This is the move tool. We get a pop up with all our different options and there's a lot. I really like this. There's uh, the free move tool has the most freedom. You'll see you have arrows so that you can move it from side to side or up and down but also you have these circles. So you can click on these and you can drag it to any angle you want to. You have the translate one. If you click on that, what you'll see is you just have arrows so you can just move it, but you can't rotate it. There's a rotating tool. It rotates stuff. I like this one over here too. This is the point to point tool. And this allows us to say, I wanna have a specific point like a corner and I want it to mate against another point. Let's do this. Let's go over here and hit free move. Let's rotate our board around 90 degrees. I'm going to drag it a little bit this way. I'm going to come back and I'm going to hit point to point. For the origin point, let's click on the board itself. I'm going to click on this corner right here. And then we can see that it automatically highlights the target point. Where do we want that corner to go? I want it to be over here in this corner. You see our boards automatically snap together. I'm going to hit OK. Check it out. This looks good. So now let's go back, make a channel for the box bottom to fit into. We'll look at the back of our board. I'm going to click on the face of it and I'm going to go to the top and hit create sketch. The box bottom has to be inset just a bit. It's not flush with the bottom. So how do we do that? If I want to have it where there's maybe like an eighth of an inch inset, I can click on line. Remember whenever I said in that pop up, you don't really have to worry about most of those settings except for that one thing. Well, now let's talk about that one thing, which is this right here, construction line. Click on that. You don't have to use these. I like it. It just makes it a little bit easier for me. What it does is basically says, this isn't gonna be a new shape that we're drawing, a new part. This is just something that allows us, this is a tool essentially. So I clicked on the corner, I'm dragging it up and let's make that one eighth of an inch. And now I have a reference point for drawing a rectangle. Click on my rectangle tool. Remember, we got to go back and turn off the construction lines now that we're drawing the rectangle. Take my mouse and it's going to snap to that point. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to drag it over till it reaches the other side and it snaps automatically. Now, how thick do we want a box bottom? Uh, let's say it's a quarter inch thick, 0.25. Enter. Now we have a rectangle that we can select and we can do just like the rabbits. We can inset this in as deep as we want. I'll come up, hit the press pull tool, and we can also make this a quarter inch deep. All right. Now we have a channel for the box bottom and we can do the other side as well. I'll turn that back on. Typically I wouldn't do this one at a time, but you know, Hey, we're going over this program and practice makes perfect. So let's do it one more time so we can make sure that we got it all down. Click on the face come up to the top, create sketch. We'll draw a new line. We'll also make sure that it says construction. Click on the corner and drag it up to an eighth of an inch. Back up to the top, rectangle, turn off the construction tool, come back over to our point and click on it. So it snaps into place. We can pull this all the way over. And then again, we're gonna type in 0.25 because we have this to be a quarter of an inch wide. We can do the same thing, click on the rectangle, up at the top, solid and press pull. And let's make this negative 0.25. When we toggle the other side back on, we'll see how well we did. You can spin this around and look at that. Now that both sides are made, I can click on one of them and hit copy, paste. See my arrows pop up, I can drag this over. I'm going to click on the circle, spin it around 180 degrees. Under our move type, click on point to point. I can come over here, click on this inside point. And for the target point, we'll also click on this inside corner. We'll do the same thing for the long side. I'm going to click on that and copy, paste. Drag it over, rotate it around 180 degrees and snap it into place. Four sides of a box. If this is going to be a box, it needs to have a box bottom. Otherwise, it's like just a hole, right? Let's make a sketch. Just like with anything, there's lots of different ways. So what we'll do is let's move it to the front view. 
and let's go up here and create a new sketch. I'm gonna click on the front pane and I am gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna hit rectangle. Instead of clicking on this corner, I can actually just move my cursor over and you see this blue dotted line shows up. So that means that my cursor is lined up exactly where that dot is. And I'm gonna make a rectangle this way. This is gonna be the box bottom. We know the box bottom is a quarter inch thick. So 0.25, we can go 3.5. If we didn't wanna do the math, we could also measure this. I can toggle one of these things off so I can see the inside of this. And at the top, we have a, a tool that says inspect. I use this all the time. We can zoom in, we can click on a corner, we can click on an edge, we even click on a face if we want to. So I'm just gonna do this corner here and then look over this other side and also click on a corner. And we know that this is gonna be four inches long. Yeah. We should have already known this one because you know our board's four inches long, right? Makes sense. I'll click on the rectangle at the top, solid, press pull, and let's make this four inches. And there we have it, a beautiful, ugly looking square again. You don't have to keep changing this. So every time you make a shape or a, a body, you don't have to go through all the same processes. We can adjust this in our profile settings and it will automatically be taken care of for us. So let's go over to profile and preferences. You got some different options here like design, assemble, configuration. One of the options is material. This is how we can save our settings. Like I could change this from metal steel, go down to wood and let's do wood and semi-gloss maple, apply. Since I already made that body before I've changed my preferences, well, I got to change it manually this time. But the other ones that I do from now on will be good. In this case, I got to do mine manually. Appearance, click and drag. Let's put the box bottom inside the box. So I can select it, come up to the move tool. We need to do the origin point. I'm going to click on that. Spin this around and let's do the bottom corner here. That's fine. Top corner works too. Move this back around and since we did bottom corner, I'm gonna zoom in and click on this bottom corner that way. You can see, hey, look, we got a box bottom in there. However, if we had this side right here, well, the bottom wouldn't really be long enough, right? Because really the bottom would need to be sticking out a quarter inch, be a quarter inch wider. But the reason why it's like this is because if we lock a box bottom into place and there's no room for it to expand or contract, then whenever it does expand, because it probably will with the changing of the humidity, it's gonna break the box. We never want that. So that's the reason why we wanna have a little bit of space, a gap on each side. That way it, that box bottom just kind of floats in that groove and it can expand as it needs to and contract as it needs to. So I've given myself a little bit of wiggle room. What I'm gonna do is click on the box bottom and we're gonna go to the move tool. And I could do this before, but I wanted to show you this part. We can click on the free move tool or the translate, but let's do free move. I'm just going to drag this over like an eighth of an inch. You see how now it's sticking an eighth of an inch out this way. And if we were to turn this one off here, you see an eighth of an inch that way. Now we don't have to worry about this thing breaking if this expands whenever the humidity changes. Turn these back on. Look at there. We have ourselves a pretty cool box. There you go. The down and dirty on how to use fusion. It's really an awesome program. Give it a shot. Thank you to everyone over on Patreon for supporting me, supporting this channel. You guys are amazing. And to meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.